And hello people, this is your host, Iridium Axel here, and welcome today to a, what would you call this, a uh, budget build for a gaming computer. So, today our budget is $400, we went over by $11, so $411, pretty solid computer. Um, yeah, alright, let's get into the actual build here. So, to start it off, we have an AMD Athlon X4 860K 3.7GHz quad-core processor. Now, no doubt this is the best budget uh, CPU that you can get. If quad-core compares nicely to many of AMD's other cards, I mean, not cards, chips, and it's just overall a powerhouse coming in at $78. Now you may be able to get something better on the Intel side. I threw together this build uh, in a little while trying to get it as low of a price as possible while still maintaining good hardware. So keep that in mind. Alright, so for the motherboard, what we have is a Gigabyte GAF2A68HM-H. Micro ATX FM2 Plus motherboard. So this is a Micro ATX build. Really nice hardware overall. Makes it look really good. Um, but yeah, this is a $50 motherboard that has four RAM slots and supports up to 64 gigabytes, which is really part of what sold me. It, uh, it's just a really nice motherboard for the price, especially with what we're trying to do here. For the RAM, I chose 8 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistic Sports, that's uh, two 4 gigabyte sticks, uh, a cast rating of 9, so that's how fast it can repeat cycles, and it's coming in at $38, which is really good for some nice DDR3 memory. It's only 1600 megahertz, but I figure $400, you're getting what you pay for. Um, for the hard drive, we just have a single one terabyte drive of uh, Seagate Barracuda 3.5 inch 7200 RPM storage. Uh, that's coming in at around $46. It's just really basic hard drive. Um, now, this is really the crowning thing with this. We have the F. XFX Radeon R7 260 2GB Core Edition video card. This is coming in at $80, which is a great price for such a good budget uh, gaming card. I compared it to a few others before deciding on it, and it always came out on top. Um, and really, it's just good overall for a budget. It's actually more expensive than the processor, but I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if that should be evened out, really. I, I'm i going to stick with what I have, for now at least. And for the case, we have the Thermaltake Core V21 Micro ATX Mini Tower Case. This guy is magnificent. It's only $40 sold from Newegg, and I love how it's built. It just, it looks magnificent. Um, one issue that we have with it is it has onboard USB 3.0 slots, but no headers on the motherboard. So if that's not a problem for you, definitely go with this. But the case is one of the most optional things about this. So you could choose something else if you wanted. I just thought it looked really nice. Back to the build. Um... For the power supply, we have a $65 EVGA Supernova NEX 650W 80 plus gold certified fully modular ATX power supply. Um, this guy is going to be able to run anything we need because the base, uh, the base wattage that's recommended for this machine, like how much it'll take, is 284. So, having 650 really leaves room for upgradability. And now, finally, last but not least, if you go on d2a.com, a wonderful website for games and such, you can generally buy uh, licenses for Windows. 
Now, it won't come with a disc, so you're going to have to install it a different way, but you're getting the license code for Windows, which is essentially having Windows. So, as long as you have a disc, you have the full Windows software that you can use for $25, and that is just a magnificent price, in my opinion, for a whole Windows operating system. Otherwise, this would be costing us about $85, and that's just insane to match into a $400 budget build. So, anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a ton for watching, and I guess I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.